often things that are close to the sublime have a different time scale and a different unfolding. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's, uh, it's really sublime. And it's really interesting how the light becomes almost a material and that you feel enveloped by it. And there's so many different reactions that you have from the visceral to the visual to just the essence of it. It was really spectacular. Je, je viens de voir justement le, le, la pièce monumentale, comme vous me l'expliquez. Euh, donc euh, cette pièce dans la pénombre, avec cette lumière particulière euh, et cette projection d un, d un, comme d'une pyramide, très impressionnant. Je trouve ça sublime. <rire> voilà, je ne sais, sais pas trop le. Euh, non, ce qui est impressionnant, c'est que l'œil enfin, ne capte absolument pas en fonction de là où on se trouve et de l'angle auquel on regarde. L'œil n'a pas, euh, pas du tout la même perception. Donc c'est très fort. Enfin, moi, je trouve ça très fort. Il faut que je digère un peu tout ça pour. Euh... Ça me fait penser au cosmos, bizarrement. Ça m'a donné quelque chose euh, qui est de l'ordre, euh, je ne sais pas, peut-être euh, de ce qu'on pourrait appeler des pharaons, je ne sais pas. Il y a quelque chose qui me, qui me touche beaucoup parce qu'il y a comme, une, euh, comme un sentiment indicible, quelque chose de, de très grand, de très puissant. Je ne sais pas ce qu'il a imaginé. J'attends de pouvoir parler euh, avec Stéphane Brauer tout à l'heure pour... Euh, pour en savoir un peu plus, mais, euh, mais en tout cas, je suis très touchée. Je trouve ça très émouvant, en tout cas. Moi, je, je trouve que c'est très intéressant parce qu'on a vraiment de, de la géométrie dans l'espace. Pour moi, les mots me manquent, mais c'est une expérience. Bah écoutez, c'est magnifique. On a l'impression de traverser un voile. On a l'impression de traverser un, un voile de nylon éclairé. Magnifique. Superbe. C'est assez impressionnant parce qu'on se demande en définitive, euh, par rapport à l'annonce qui a été faite, on s'attendait à avoir plusieurs euh, représentations. Et là, on a un œuvre unique, euh, polymorphe, Interprétation extrêmement multiple, donc du coup, ça, ça, ça perturbe quelque part, c'est sûr. J'adore, je trouve ça très poétique, très euh, euh, fascinant, fascinant, c'est... Voilà. And sublime. Sublime would be the perfect word, I think, to describe it. C'est un peu, ça ressemble, c'est très bizarre parce que c'est une expérience très individuelle, alors que ça requiert une mise en œuvre et un volume très important. Ça pose la question est-ce que, est que ça doit se vivre comme une expérience individuelle ou est-ce qu'il faut au contraire mettre en scène une foule intéressée Alors, je ne sais pas, peut-être deux directions de recherche différentes. Futur absolu et, et en même temps, pour moi, ça me ramène au passé. C'est très étrange. Il y a comme, euh, comme, une, comme une continuité. C'est comme si euh, nous proposait, euh, un, je sais pas, peut-être une porte, un passage, quelque chose. Peut-être que je vais trop loin, mais voilà, la sensation, le sentiment que j'ai, en tout cas, c'est ça. Saint-Légard est complètement white. And uh, uh, Stefan proposed completely dark and only with a light. And he called me out of the blue. So the phone rang one day in New York and it was Stefan and he described this incredible project to me that I didn't believe at first, actually. I thought it was too <laughs> amazing to be true. There's, there shouldn't be a function in art. I think in his world, this word function is completely contrary to art. Art should be something that should be experienced. And at some point it was like making sense with the whole you know, environment. It was working, it was made for. You have in France three main castles for kings or emperors. You have Versailles, you have Fontainebleau and you have Compiègne. And Compiègne is really 
the Versailles for Louis XV. C'est une sorte de prisme lumineux, éphémère, qui est en perpétuelle mutation et qui impose à la pénombre d'autres formes, une autre géométrie, euh, qui est transparente et comme habitée par une brume que euh, l'imaginaire humain associe souvent au rêve et à la poésie. Cette construction géométrique est comme irisée aussi euh, par l'irruption lente euh, d'un or, d'une lumière plus vraie que la blanche, et qui est comme l'incarnation de la pureté. Nous avons là une magnifique démonstration euh, d'une technologie asservie, j'utilise le mot à escient bien sûr, par l'homme à une vision, et qui devient donc, grâce à vous, une œuvre d'art. Stéphane Abreur, euh, en vous nous saluons un artiste, un artiste et un visionnaire qui, de surcroît, a voulu euh, nous offrir cette œuvre pour Compiègne, pour faire vivre le palais différemment. Et nous tenons à vous en remercier très chaleureusement. Alors cette œuvre, j'espère, fera naître en vous euh, une émotion forte qu'il faut appréhender avec lenteur. Euh, on vous invitera donc à pénétrer dans la salle des gardes un petit peu au compte goutte tour 10 par 10. Voilà, à tous, tous ceux qui sont présents ici, à vous, cher Stéphane, un grand merci.
average celebrity meets in one year ten times the amount of people that the average person meets in his entire life. Monsieur Starkey, can you explain a bit the, uh, the Chateau and also the relationship between France and America? Okay. The castle was built by Louis XV and Gabriel. Gabriel, as you know, uh, built for Louis XV also the Place de la Concorde and the Petit Trianon. And it was a palace who uh, Louis XV wanted to live in summer and he made a lot of di dispense for the castle. You have in France three main castles for kings or emperors. You have Versailles, you have Fontainebleau and you have Compiègne. And Compiègne is really the Versailles for Louis XV. But at the end of his life, the castle or the palace was not totally uh, realized. So it was with the 16th we end the work of the palace. I use the term palace while it is in the city, not outside the city. And it was really an idea of kings to have something between the city and the forest. We have a huge forest. It was used by the kings also to, for hunting. And Louis XVI was so proud to, to have uh, the victory with uh, the American troops during the Independence War uh, that he asked the interior decoration uh, would be in relationship with the Independence War of America. Can, you, can we walk through? Yes, of course, please, follow me. <laughs> no, everybody says uh, what is uh, the function of, of art, uh, what is art for, I mean, uh, should it make you uh, wonder things, understand things, uh, should you like it aesthetically, I don't know, there are many things and uh, should it, I don't know, uh, denounce things. And I, I think there's, there shouldn't be a function in art. I think it is a world, this word function is completely contrary to art. Art should be something that should be experienced, lived. And um, I know from all my conversations, of course, with Stefan, uh, what, what he uh, wants to transmit with this, uh, with this piece. And I leave that to him for, for him to, to tell you. But I think he really wants everyone to experience the piece. Uh, and I think that uh, each one is going to have a very personal experience out of it. I think for somebody it might um, remind him of things. For somebody it might um, transport him to the future. Uh, for somebody it might touch a very spiritual aspect uh, from others. Uh, it will stay uh, as an aesthetic, uh, magnificent uh, piece. I don't know, I think um, each one will have a, a different uh, point of view. And even 
I haven't seen it yet installed here, so uh, I'm very excited uh, and I hope to have the first view today. I love the way the doors are. Yeah. That is really uh, the most important neoclassical castle or palace in France. So I know that in the state you are very front, front of neoclassicism. And here that is the most important castle of this style. Please. When they both met, it was like a mutual um, falling in love. And uh, there was like an irresistible strength from one, really mutually, uh, and they wanted to do something together. So I, I was like a little bit of the glue in the middle, trying to put this, bring these two worlds together, and it, it suits me perfectly because my company is We Want Contrast, and it was bringing the most beautiful things from the past with this Palais de Compiègne, which is one of the only three uh, Chateau Royaux in France. So, so prestigious, such a prestigious place. And having Stéphane Breuer, who I think is uh, the most visionary artist and uh, he's in the f he lives in the future. So to bring them both together in the, in, in the project, uh, for me is just magnificent and I'm, I'm so excited. I am a new media artist. I work a lot with interactive technology combined with traditional materials. So, how did this collaboration with Stefan happen? I know he contacted you through email for like the past eight months. Right, yes. We um, met by telephone. He called me. Uh, he saw a project that I built for another artist, for an American artist, uh, that he admired and um, he found out who had done the design and technology behind it and he called me out of the blue. So the phone rang one day in New York and it was Stefan and he described this incredible project to me that I didn't believe at first actually. I thought it was too amazing to be true and um, we started working together, him in Paris and me in New York, for almost eight months and we didn't meet face to face until I arrived in Paris uh, just a couple days ago. But we talked a lot on the phone about his ideas, about what, how he wanted the project to seem, about what was possible, what wasn't, and the space. And uh, Compiani showed me photographs that uh, I could only imagine. So being here in person is very exciting to see it in real life. It is a new point of view, a new uh, uh, visuality, if I can say it like that, um, in the Salle de Garde. And the project in Salle des Gardes is very, is, is always like that with artists. The Salle des Gardes is completely white. And the Salle des Gardes it is important because it is old, very old, uh, old, when the people arrived in, in, Pala, in Palais. And it is the first uh, impression for the people outside the um, habitué du Palais. And uh, uh, Stéphane proposed completely dark and only with the light. But it is always like that. If you propose something in the artist, ah, it's necessary, I have one a new point of view, said yes, okay, I understand. And he proposed completely in verse. But I like that. <laughs> I believe that every human relationship is structured around this principle, the, the will to give something, the, the will to, to receive, the desire to receive. If both, uh, if both will and desire don't match, then nothing can appear. Uh, if you're an artist and you want to create something, but, in, but you have no one in front of you who wants to receive it, uh, it, it the, 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 uh, I'm not saying that you cannot create it, but to make it happen, as for example here, they, they accepted what I wanted to give, and so it made it possible, and it's the same in love. If you want to, if you love a woman and you want to give your love to this woman, if this woman, if the woman doesn't want to receive your love, then it, the reality doesn't appear, you know. And in the palais, the first moment, good moment, is because uh, Mr. Sarkis, Manuel Sarkis, the director of the palais, is completely agree. 
He said it's important with the light. It's a good idea. When you create, the first instinct is like an instinct and it goes very fast and you have the idea and you know that this is what you want. But then you, you work, you develop it very slowly, you think about it at night, during the day, all the time it lives with you, it changes and it evolves. And uh, I like things to go, yeah, to go very slowly, to be unperceptible. I hope that the, 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 the sculpture will live in people for a long time inside them and they will be able to, to, to think about it. And for me, it was a, a meditation. I mean, for a long time, I, I, I was very inspired by a, by a text, by a very mystical text. And the, it's, it's a text about the creation of the universe. And it was really quite amazing because I drew, the, I drew the sculpture first and then I read this text and it made an echo so strong to this sculpture and it helped me it helped me understand how the, sculpt, the, the, the rhythm of evolution of the sculpture, because at the beginning the sculpture is full, full of light, and then the light retracts itself, and you see five rays of light appear in the void. Then the, the rays disappear, the, the sculpture becomes empty, just the, ex, the exterior is, is here, but the, the inside is totally empty, and then the next color appears and fills this void. And so um, I didn't know at the beginning if I, if I should start the sculpture by being empty or full, but through this text uh, I understood that it should start full because in this text they say that at first the universe was full of light, full of light. It was, it was, it was full of God. God was everywhere, so light was everywhere. And God understood that if he wanted life to appear, he had to give room to, to this life to appear. So he retracted life into himself. And it's also a, a nice analogy regarding um, just the, 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 the act of creation itself. Because before creating, you, you, you just go into yourself and try to, try to see what you want to create. And it, the whole concept's quite spiritual. No? Yeah, I think so. I, it'll be hard to predict what people get out of it, but it certainly has that component for Stefan and certainly for me as well. I think the spiritual part is um, crucial. Uh, that is part of the experience that is what will make it transcend something that's about the technology, for example, or about the space. Um, it is about those things. Of course, you can't be in Compiègne and not be amazed by Compiègne. You can't figure out how the technology works and not be amazed by that as well. But that's not really not the important part and I think that that will come across. Um, the, uh, the experience is really um, about, it's about different things for different people, but it uh, has a very um, idealistic quality. There's um, something almost even quasi-religious, which is uh, spiritual is a better word for it, but there's certainly a feeling of pure light that has a very ancient tradition in culture and art history and philosophy that has to do with the human yearning to be part of something eternal and part of something infinite. So it's a, a, a kind of um, symbol of that and is a, a very small, re tangible reenactment of entering into that kind of holy light for a moment. So I think that that is um, a very spiritual thing and there's also the a sound component will help to create that mood for people. Um, not that it needs to be too sober. I think it will be, it will have weight, it'll have like a gravitas, but it's not gonna be, um, you know, like a heavy, you know, you, people will be quiet, but there's nothing, it's not like a, trying to intimidate people, you know? It's, yeah, it's, I think we, and going back to what Stefan said earlier, we pretty much approached the project as like a soundtrack. We said like initially I came like as a music supervisor exchanging a lot of ideas. We've been discussing about that since month with Stefan. It was really exciting because it's getting out of the usual field of, of you know, I would say project that you do regularly. It's getting like really like out of the blue. In a good, in a good sense, of course, and uh, and so we envision that like as yeah, really as a soundtrack. 
and then as a music supervisor we kind of like discuss the vibe and, and we really much discuss about like movies that we loved and then from that point we were able to just translate to Jean-Francois that also had his own thing on the top and, and uh, yeah it's a trip, we often use the, the word trip but it is and, uh, and Stefan used that yeah it's like the, the future absolute thing is like projecting of course we're talking about immaterial and as I was saying like music is the most immaterial thing that it exists it's a dream machine and we really wanted to like give a lot of dream in that and I think in that sense uh, yeah we can we can see how yeah, there's, there's an osmosis I don't know the exact word in English exactly. between the yeah <laughs> Bet yeah between between the the the, the, the work uh, the sculpture and the music that Jeff has made and uh, yeah it's really exciting and it's beautiful from what we have so far and when you first installed it did it sound in this space the way you were expecting it to sound or any surprises yeah well, I even <laughs> better <laughs> even <laughs> definitely yeah we, we were uh, hearing uh, problems with uh, needing, needing uh, big uh, speakers in this enormous space and finally uh, after lots of technical uh, uh, tests. In fact, uh, we have a, a small device that I mean, dresses the space exactly like the way we want it. Uh, and also because the music itself is not, is really a lot of re renovations, as I was saying, delays, reverb, smooth coming this way. And so in this space, with a small device that we have, it's enough. It's perfect. perfect. And the sound, you, didn't, you don't even know where it comes from. Uh, I bet you, you cannot know where, where the source is when you start. It's, it's For me, it is a, a, it's a lecture of architecture. Mm -hmm. And I understand uh, this point of view because he, he worked in the theatre. Mm -hmm. And he, he has a, the sense of a space. He has a sense of the contrast. Is something that could travel? Through? Yeah, sure. Well, flying, of course. Well, it, it's it's material. So, well, anything can travel. Even a sculpture from Jeff Koons or whatever, or even a, a amazing sculpture from Richard Serra, they travel around the world. But this is even easier because you can you can even send the information through the web, through the internet, and have the sculpture appear in different places where the installation is made possible. And hopefully, one day, I would like to have different sculptures all around the planet that would interact with each other, with each other. because there is a concept in, uh, in uh, quantum physics called intrication, where you have two electrons that can be, one electron can be here and another electron can be at billions of kilometers, and when one electron changes, the other one changes, they are intricated together. And I would like to create one day an installation where you have ten sculptures that are intricated between each other, or even have collectors have the, 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 the same sculpture, but each sculpture of each collector would intricate and react, and you could feel the presence of the other collector, for example, in its room, and, and so they would communicate between each other. That would be beautiful. And at some point it was like making sense with the whole you know, environment. It was working, it was made for. And that's what I love from this, this, this project, and like the way Stefan work also is very open. I mean, he strive for his things, he has a perfect and definite ID, but also like listening and like adjusting and things and listening to people in their field. And at the end, he gives something that is super like cool. You know, that's the world, to be honest. And uh, from the test we've made, we are really happy because it sounds great. It's true, it kind of touches your soul when you listen to it. Exactly. Future absolutely is like the, the, the ideal direction of the future that I hope will, will happen and therefore it, uh, future absolute means that about this relationship between the, the will of the wanting to give and the desire to receive is just to understand that this should be a circle like God gave, gave us life and we have to understand uh, I think that our, our, our role as humans on, is to understand that we've been given that and so for, first of all, there's this step of understanding, to have this revelation of understanding that we've been given life and that God exists. But then, the next step is not to keep it for us, it's to give back. And just 
I don't know how, but it's, it has to be a cycle. We cannot keep it for us. We have to give back what we have been given. And this is the sense of future absolute. So, I don't know how this can influence uh, financial reality or just this capitalist, capitalist world we live in. But at one point, we see today that all the billionaires are giving back all the money they, they've earned and putting it into foundations and hopefully for the good of the for, for the good of humanity. So maybe it's starting now to people are starting to understand that. And so I don't know. Maybe the world will change and uh, we will understand that economy has to be based on altruism and that it's possible. And it's been possible here because this exhibition has been made possible with barely no money uh, and everyone has been willing to, to, to give and receive and, and participate and this is how I wanted it to be and uh, at the end of the exhibition I will give the, the, the sculpture to, the, to the, the Imperial Palace of Compiègne because I've been given the, the, the chance and the opportunity to exhibit it here and I want to give back, it seems natural. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming.
sort of uh, unnecessary uh, adoration of art today, which I find unne unnecessary. Flying, flying. 